Hey y'all, um, this is basically just a little video retouching on 64 versus 32. I I've been having a little conversation back and forth over the last, uh, I guess it's been a week or so now with somebody over that, and you know, they're confused. Um, and for the purpose of this video, I tried to find a page, I tried to Google for a page that truly explains the difference between 32 and 64 and what the real limitations are because the real limitations are differences and pros and cons of 32 versus 64 at this point are how memory is addressed and it has to do with going back to what a bit is and bytes and how computers work I think at our most basic we all know that computers work on ones and zeros. Anyways, back to the web page. I searched, I searched, I couldn't find one that wasn't trying to convince me their CPU or their operating system or yada yada wasn't vastly superior. It's like so it's like let's go back to the pure facts. This is a byte. Eight sets of on-off switches, ones and zeros, representing up to 256 values. This is nothing, everything off. You know, one on's a one. So, you know, if I turn the first one on, I get one. If I turn the second one on, I get two. I get three by turning them both on. So on and so forth, up through, continuing to double, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, for a total combined value of 155 plus all zeros for 256. This is the basis of all computing and how all computers work little off on ones and zeros. 32 bits or 32 bit computing or software because we've had 64 bit hardware for a long time is capable of addressing just over four billion and I'm for those of you who are using the European numbering system I apologize I'm going to include these numbers in the description because y'all use some weird stuff like where, where we say billion, you say millard, where, we, where, Amer where the American numbering system says trillion, the European numbering system says billion. So I may confuse some of y'all here. Look at the actual numbers I put in the description to fully understand. 64 bits, you know, it's like you, you see the ads, they go, why would you only use half your computer? It's not half, it's an order of magnitude. 64-bit is capable of assigning an order of magnitude greater values up to just over 4 billion times the number of values that 32-bit can assign. That is such an order of magnitude leap beyond what 32-bit was capable of, which let's face it, we're still largely living in a 32-bit world there isn't any software out there that does computations that would actually take advantage of a 64-bit system. To give you an idea of the type of computations that would be involved to even begin addressing that number of values, let me paint a scenario for you. In real time, rendering black mirror water the type of stuff where you're out in the mountains and you look out and you see a mountain in the sky reflecting in the lake and you think you're looking at two horizons reflected on each other. That type of, or out in the middle of the ocean and you see that stuff. You, like you, see, you see creation reflected upon itself and it just goes on for infinity reflecting in itself. That type of thing done at four to eight times high definition, you know, not 1920 by 1080, four to eight times that done in real time and being interacted with so all the movements and ripples and everything are being tracked and reproduced in real time. For those of you who do graphic design and things like that where these type of computations will inevitably become very useful, you have an appreciation for how long it takes to launch that stuff and how much just raw computational power would have to go into rendering something like that in real time as you're interacting with it. You can pre-blanch it and with the physics engine you can get some, you can get damn close to that now, but it's one of those things like you try and stay away from it because it just can't really be done in real time right now. With that many extra values to address, it's conceivable that with the proper computations you could do it. 
you know, the one constant of computers is what's done on supercomputers today will be done on the desktops of tomorrow. Just how many tomorrows is another thing altogether. At this point, what 64-bit does is instead of addressing the 4.2 odd billion values that 32-bit is capable of doing, it drops the decimal place limiters off and says, oh, well, I'll do 5 or 6 billion calculations. Not the 18 billion billion 64 is capable of, just a few billion more. In some cases, not even half a billion more. It still makes a difference. But it's, you know, it's the difference between taking 27 hours and 30 hours to render something. And a lot of, and there's so many places today that that can break down along the chain. I can start with 64-bit software, end with a 64-bit CPU, and somewhere in there, I break down to a 32-bit calculation because I had to go phone this packet out to over here, and it's limited to 32, because it's still 32-bit stuff, even though I'm on a 64-bit system running a 64-bit application on a 64-bit OS. Excuse me. So, uh, so it's, you get limited. Um, the other th thing is the memory limitation is only really a limitation in Windows because of how Windows works. Both Linux and OS X, because of the way they handle addressing memory, most modern computers are capable of using more than 4 gig on a 32-bit system. And it's like I just explained in the first half of this video why 32-bit can't address more than 4 gigabytes because the number of bits in 4 gigabytes is the limit of addressing values for 32-bit computations. Well, the thing is, none of us have one computer anymore. All of us have multiple computers because we have two cores or four cores or six cores or eight cores or 12 cores or, you know, however many cores we have which means we can run that many independent 32 processes. So here's a little exercise for all of you uber geeks to do. Take the number of cores in your system and the amount of RAM in your system and divide your RAM by the number of cores. Do you have more than four gigabyte per core? I'm willing to bet for 90% of you, the answer is no which means a properly written 32-bit piece of software that can chop the task up properly at this point is capable of almost equaling if not in some cases because 32-bit software is more def is more well defined in some cases exceeding what current 64-bit software is capable of this doesn't mean I'm against 64-bit I want it to get here as much as everyone else so we can do things like the real-time water rendering and so on and so forth. I'm just saying it isn't here yet, and it's a big chicken and egg thing. We will all be running 64-bit operating systems as soon as we have that 64-bit software. And we will all have that 64-bit software as soon as we're all running 64-bit operating systems. It'll happen. It'll happen eventually. You know, there's people talking about 128-bit computing now, which is, again, another order of magnitude in evolution forward. It, it, it's going to happen. So it's conceivable in the next three to five years you're going to be switched into 64-bit. But right now, look at the raw facts. It's market and spin on all sides because almost no end-user tasks are 64-bit from beginning to end, and the ones that are, are not addressing 18 billion billion values. They're addressing damn near close to the limits of 32-bit values. We're just not doing those type of calculations yet. Peace out all. Hopefully that was useful to those of you who are really confused.